there's a difference between entangled and being involved. The main difference between getting involved and becoming entangled simply stated, one is entangled when he is not free to get loose. When the everyday affairs of this life hem us in, in so tightly that we cannot free ourselves to fulfill the call of Christ, our commander, then we have become entangled in the thorns of non-eternal pursuits. Indeed, you can be sure that you have become entangled in your possessions or projects or passions, you know, when they possess you. So I'm talking about those that you see, they're going off online, you know, depending on who they you know, who they support, whatever candidate, whether it's past candidates, whether it's president, I mean, present candidates, you know, like they're going crazy, you know, they're arguing back and forth. Like it hurts me so bad to see two Christians, especially, like I said, if you're not saved, you're, you know, you, you're living your life on your own terms. This is not necessarily for you, but if I were you, I would think about this as well. When people are arguing back and forth, um, about which president was better and who it's, it's just, it's crazy because it separates family members. It separates, you know, those that are in the body of Christ that are saved, you know, sometimes whether that's in the same community or whether in different communities, sometimes it could be the, the same race or different races. It's like we allow all of these things that's going on in the world in a system that Satan is the God of to cause us to get entangled and get all crazy. And, and, and it's just it's just sad to sit back and watch. And, you know, it, it even saddens me more. To see people that are saved, that, that the scripture clearly tells to acknowledge God in all of your ways before you jump online and say something crazy, before you watch a video and just assume that this happened. Acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your paths. Do not allow, allow your emotions to get you all caught up and get you going and saying super crazy things online. If you think about it, if you've been in church any length of time. That's how, you know, when we like for me, I've been in church for, you know, like 18 years now. I mean, I always went to church once in a while with my mom and aunt when I was younger. But being in church myself, I've been in church like 18, 19 years now. And we see if if, if anybody want to be honest, how do how do preachers get over on a lot of the congregants? It's by getting them emotional. It's by getting them all riled up and going with the music and all that. And then they take everything out of their pockets. Why? Because when people get emotional and get all crazy, they don't make good decisions. And that's what you see out here with all, when it comes to all of these different types of topics. People get super crazy, man. I see people arguing. I see people that are saved talking crazy. And I'm like, listen, you know, why are you so caught up in this situation? Like, why, why are you allowing this worldly affair, this worldly matter, this worldly situation to get you all flustered and crazy? Like you, it's like, like how as, as Christians, as saved people that we, we don't remember and understand that. Listen, this is Satan's system. You know, let me read second Corinthians uh, chapter four, verses three and four. Um, and before I read that, I want to read a quote. It says, everyday affairs can subtly entangle soldiers of Christ in effect, neutralizing their effectiveness in the ongoing spiritual war with the world, the flesh and the devil. We have to remember that there is still a spiritual war. Some of us are not even focused on that as much as we are focused on all of these other things that are going on. And in the process, because we are not really focused on the war at hand, the war that matters most, the war that we've been you know, enlisted as soldiers to be a part of. It is it is it is really killing our effectiveness. I mean, I saw something this morning on Instagram and I don't want to go into it because this is a friend of mine. And this guy, listen, he does great work as long as I've known him. Great guy. Always been heavily in ministry. You know, I think he's written some books. You know, he's been on national television and he's always been a good guy. I never got the vibe from him when I was around him that he was ever trying to get over on the people, really had true love for the people and the youth. But I saw him post something on Instagram 
this morning that I was so disappointed in. And it's because he's 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 getting himself entangled up in the things that we see going on here in America. And, and I get it. I'm not talking about involvement like we, we should be involved in certain situations and speaking out and do it. But the, the post that he made, I was I was I was disappointed and I don't want to speak on it because I don't want to stick him out there like that, because like I said, he's a good guy and it's not personal. But I, you know, it's like, man, this could, this could, all of the work that you put in, all the things that you've done, this could potentially, um, you know, this could potentially like slow down some of your effectiveness or take away from the effectiveness that you've had in ministry and in people lives. And that's what the devil is looking for. He's looking for you to say something crazy online so that he can say, see, look, I told you he wasn't exactly how um, he said he was. And I'm not saying that we are perfect or that we're trying to be perfect because we're not. But I do believe that we have to acknowledge God before we post anything or before we say anything. And I'm not going to say that there are times that we just mess up and didn't catch ourselves. And But it's like, listen, it you know, you can't constantly allow, you know, the same type of things to set you off, the same type of things to get you going. And on top of that, you know, watch all of these videos and these the news and all of these things and allow this to be the, th you know, the thing that you use as your confirmation to the truth, you know what I mean? Because no matter what news channel you watch, you know, what, whatever, whoever they support, they're going to lean more to that. You know what I mean? And what's going to happen is if it's what you support, you're going to lean more to that. And that's why God says, listen, all right, I know you're involved in those things. I know that you are concerned about these things, but you need to talk to me before you make any statements, before you make any decisions, before you make any declarations, before you say that something is 100% truth. Talk to me first. Let's talk. Pray. You know, let me give you some clarity on this. Let me show you what the truth really is about this individual or about this situation. And a lot of times, we get in, we get entangled emotionally first, and then it, it begins to, you know, mess with the effectiveness that, you know, that we've already had or the way that we've been working. And I'm telling you, I see it a lot. I've seen people say some crazy stuff and do some wild stuff that they can't take back. But that scripture I wanted to share with you guys was second Corinthians chapter four, verses three through four. And it says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So it says, if the gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So those of you out there that are saved, and sometimes you get discouraged because of, you know, all of the people that's coming up against Christ now and saying all these negative things about Jesus and want to get rid of the Lord and the Bible and things of that. Listen, the gospel is hid to those that are lost. That's that's just all what it is. You know, even though they think we're crazy and we're following the white man's religion or the, you know, uh, something that somebody created and whatever, whatever. But it's hid to them that are lost and it's revealed to us that have been found that Christ has enlisted as soldiers. Verse four says in whom. Well, let me read that verse three again and go right into it, it says. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world talking about Satan have blinded the minds of them which believe not. So it says, listen, when you don't believe in Christ, when you are not a follower of Christ, Satan has your mind. It says that he have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And why did I read that scripture? Because you have to understand that those that are not saved, those that don't believe, those that are constantly coming up against what we believe, Satan has control of their mind. And those that are in the world that don't believe, that are living their own lives, Satan has control of their minds. And anytime he has control of their minds, they're going to do crazy things. There's going to be wild things happening. And because he is the God of this world, because he is the God of this system, those that are involved in, the, in that system, more than likely, almost a hundred times out of a hundred is controlled by him. So to have us online arguing at the dinner table, arguing at the recreation center, arguing wherever we are arguing about politics and, 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 you know, actors and like people that are really, truly not, you know, saved or really, truly followers of Christ. 
it is doing a disservice to us. Like, listen, they're going to do whatever they want to do. And just because God is using somebody to 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 make decisions to to further the gospel that doesn't necessarily even mean that you know they are particularly saved or that they are truly followers of Christ it could be just that God is using them for the time at hand we saw that with Pharaoh you know he raised Pharaoh up for that very purpose so I'm not saying who's saved and who's not saved but what I'm saying is you see people get super caught up into all of these different things that they see that's going on on the news in politics, whether it's in, you know, like I said, in, in, in the movie scene, the music scene. And it's like, listen, we that are saved, we have to stop allowing our emotions, our emotions to drive us when it comes to living in this world. We have to stop allowing ourselves to get entangled in the affairs of this, of this life. It's one thing to be involved. It's one thing to have a say. So it's one thing to try to do something about something that we feel is not right. But when you get entangled and you start bugging, you start talking crazy, you start acting wild. You start hating people. You start, you know, cutting people off over people that you don't even know over certain situations that you don't even understand what's going on. And this is the thing. This is Satan's world. He is the God of this world. God is in control. The Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is in control. We know that God's will is going to come to pass. But at this time, Satan is the God of the system. And he is moving those that are that don't belong to the Lord or that don't have the mind of Christ however he please. So if you're saved and you're following behind these individuals and hoping that they're going to bring some peace and some prosperity and love and all these things things to your life, then man, listen, you are, you, you, you're lost. You're missing out on what's really going on. You're forgetting that this world is dying. You're forgetting that. Listen, it is the reason why things are getting worse and not getting better and is not going to get better. It's because the world is packing away. And really quickly, let me read that scripture to you. And, and I'm and I'm going to close in a second, but let me read the scripture to you. First John chapter two, verses 15 through 17. Listen to what it says. And, th and this is very powerful and something for you guys to really think about. The scripture says, love, not the world neither the things that are in the world. And many of us that are saved will say, oh man, I don't love the world. I love Jesus. I don't love the things of the world. Listen what it goes on to say. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but it is of the world. So it says all of those things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That's all a part of the world. And guess what? Most of the people we're arguing about, we're following, we're trying to make, you know, that, not even trying that, but that some of us are making them our idols and saying they're such a great person. Listen, most of them are. They have lust of the flesh. They have lust of the eyes and they're dealing with the pride of life. And it says, you know, it's not of the father, but it is of the world. And this is no knock to them. You know, prayerfully, these individuals will get saved down the road. So this is not even anything personal towards them. Let's be clear about that. We are talking about us, those that are already saved, you know, that should already know better not to get caught up or entangled in these things. But it goes on to say, and the world passeth away. In other words, it is dying. It is on hospital.